Good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Hay Ray and today our video is going to be on this 6.0 power stroke that came to us not running. Uh, this was towed in from another shop that was done messing with it. They have replaced the high pressure oil pump and they replaced standpipe on the passenger side and they stated that they could still hear air leaking when they did a leak down test on it so um, as you can hear it is now running so stay tuned and in this video we'll show you how we got this thing running Contact. This is brought in from another shop that was unable to figure out what's going on. Uh, got to the point where he doesn't want to mess with it anymore. He's put on a new high pressure oil pump, new stand pipes and dummy plugs. Um, I'll try to explain what that is later. And I don't know if he has resealed the inject. So um, he brought it here and wanted us to see if we could figure out what's going on because he says he's done messing with it. So. Stay tuned and we'll see if we can get this thing figured out for it. Okay, so what I've done is I have made myself my own test port for this uh, 6.0. And what you want to do is this is a metric fitting, O-ring fitting. And this is where the sensor goes into, the IPR sensor. Um, or excuse me, ICP sensor goes into here. And... I just took the ICP sensor out of there. This is the ICP sensor and I took it out of there, went over to my local um, hydraulic shop and they got me a fitting that went from these threads to female pipe thread. And then I made myself a little air hose to hook up to the airline. Now we will put full air pressure to this thing because this part of the system is equipped to handle several thousand pounds of oil pressure so we're not going to hurt anything actually we're going to be low pressure by using air pressure so I mean, what we're going to do is we're going to hook up air pressure to this thing we're going to see if we can get here an air leak so what he was telling me was going on is that we have air that sounds like it's leaking over here on this side uh, even after he's done all the things that he thought that he could do so go ahead and put air pressure to this thing we do if we do it this way we're going to have to manually or electronically close the IPR valve and then see if we can hear any air um, I will try to um, kind of show you guys how I check it a lot of times I'll take a stethoscope with this and you can kind of hear where it's leaking from. Um, you want to be careful with using any kind of soap or anything that suds up because, you know, this does go down into the oil. So let's go ahead and hook air to this thing. Okay, so putting air pressure to it. Oh, also, this was all off of here when the truck came over here because, you know, he left it that way for me, makes it easier for me. Okay, so we wanna come in here. I've went into the powertrain control module and then we wanna come over here to injector control pressure regulator. And we don't need to monitor live data. Um, so what I want is I want this thing to go to zero. So decrease, there we go. And we can hear that we're still leaking a lot of air now to me that sounds like it's coming from the injectors themselves but let's go ahead and get some light on the subject so that you guys can see and i can see okay so now using my highly technologically advanced stethoscope here we're going to see if we can hear where this is coming from. So this is what they call a dummy plug. All it's doing 
is plugging the port, not hearing any air leaking past there. Make sure we're not leaking here. I hear nothing there. We're leaking air at that one. Sounds like we're leaking air at that one. We're definitely leaking air at that. I can hear a lot of air moving through there. See if I can put you guys down there to where you can hear what I'm hearing. There's a lot of air moving through that. So I think what I'm hearing is coming through the injectors. Either way, we're gonna have to pull that thing off of there and see if there's any seals that are damaged. We may be uh, redoing some of this work here. So uh, we'll pull this thing off of here and see what we find. That was violent. I'll be back when I get this all tore apart. All right, everyone. Well, I had some other things going on, so I wasn't able to record everything. But uh, I did get this thing apart. So I've got all my parts here. These are the new seals and the new nipples that they send along. Um, everything's new here. And this is the special tool that they send along as well. And that fits like snug inside there, just like that. And then I took my half inch impact with a 23 millimeter socket and just took it right out. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some uh, oil. I've still got a little oil down in here, but I did, we're gonna go ahead and also clean up this surface in here. There's a, here, I'll show you guys. There's a surface down in there that this thing sets in and this thing will set right down in here. Come on. Then this, just lube that thing up. Okay, now this sits down on top of there and this goes on top of there. Now, there is a torque spec for that and I'll put that up on the screen here and because i've still got to go look for it but i'll put it up on the screen right now and we're just going to continue doing that with all the others uh we're going to put a new what i call a dummy plug in there i'm not going to do any of these others because i don't have the seals for them plus these never get moved around or used so should not be leaking there um, so we're just going to replace all these and get those things torqued down then. So one of the things I'm looking for here is I want to make sure, I mean, I don't know. I haven't been able to really find a smoking gun yet. Um, however, these things were pretty easy to turn in the rail here. Um, and they had a lot of give to them. So 
you know, it's uh, it is a good thing that we changed them because uh, these new ones are definitely a lot tighter fitting. So the only problem is I'm not really seeing, other than that, I'm not really seeing a smoking gun. Not saying that we won't, you know, that it, it's not going to take care of it, but just not seeing that smoking gun that I was hoping for. Oh, um, yeah, okay, here we go. This one's heavily damaged. So one of the things you do have to be careful for, I don't know if this will show up on camera or not. Like there's some really heavy score marks right along the side there like yeah to the point I can feel that now that is going to leak so one of the things you do want to be careful with is when you go down on top of the injectors and you put these things in there you want to I mean these are designed to move a little bit however you do want to you want to be careful because you don't want to put these in crooked and use the uh, bolts to pull it down. If it's crooked, you can really score up these things here. So, sorry, I keep calling them things. They're ball tubes. They call them ball tubes. So, they're, the reason I call them things is because, for one, English was not my first language, and two, when I'm in front of the camera, it's easier to say things than it is to actually call them the name because I'll get these mental blocks when I know that I need to say it. I get these mental blocks. So I'll try to start calling them by their names, but don't count, don't bet on it that it's going to happen every time. Well, I know that this could have caused a problem. Whether it was all of the problem, I don't know, but it could be a problem. These O-rings are a little bit, they're okay. They're not as pliable as these are, but uh, I would expect that with 300,000 miles. They're not hard and brittle. I don't see any cracks in them. So, you know, not much to see there, but yeah. So, let's get this truck in here. We'll get a new dummy plug put in here. We'll put this thing back together. Well, actually, we're going to put new O-rings into the top of the injectors. We're going to reseal the injectors as well. And then we'll get this dummy plug put in. We'll put the this thing on, put the stem in, and let's just see what kind of leaks we've got. All righty, folks. Well, We've got the rail put back on. We've got the new plugs and standpipe put in. And it no longer leaks up top here, but I can hear it leaking down inside. So we are going to have to remove the top end of this engine, which includes removing the turbo and the intake. Um, it's not terrible. It's not any fun, but it's not terrible. Um, so everything up top has to come off so that we can get that cover for the high pressure oil pump. We got to get that off of there. We're going to pressurize it again and then see where our leak is coming from. I suspect it's probably either from the new pump that they put in or it could be uh, the rail that hooks onto the pump. So. Hopefully, I don't know. I'm not sure which I would rather have, but either way, we're going to have to remove that center and get down in there so we can get figured out what's uh, what's leaking. So, um, yeah, I'll be back when I get all of that stuff off of there, get this thing out, and we'll uh, start testing once I get that off of there. Hello, folks. Welcome back. We're back on this thing, and things have escalated fairly quickly. I went ahead, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to eliminate the possibility of the pump being having an internal leak, leaking back down into the low-pressure oil pump. So I went ahead and removed the high-pressure pump and also the driver's side valve. Now, um, what this has also done is allowed us to get a lot more access and do more extensive testing. So I will tell you that I also decided to hook up the smoke machine to this thing. And 
let's see if I can find the leak. Now, I will tell you guys that I have found the leak, and then I'll show you what I found. Um, like I said, what I did there is I went ahead and put a piece of rubber uh, in between the pump outlet and the oil rail, and I blocked that off. So we have, we are, the, the only thing we're testing now is the top oil rails, the injectors, and the stand pipes. So uh, we still have a leak even with that blocked off. So now we hook up our smoke machine. I've got the air hooked up to it. You can see it. I don't have the smoke turned on, but let's go ahead and turn the smoke on and I'll show you what we've got here. Here shortly, you'll see smoke coming up. All right, so we can see some smoke starting to come out of there. Now, I put my camera up there because I was thinking it's in the plug or the standpipe down below and I don't really see anything coming out of there however I see it coming from further up and then coming down into the hole there so I believe what we have going on is a leak on the standpipe up by the oil rail and I can hear the leak coming from over here so what we're going to do now is I we'll be removing the standpipe and let's see if we can find a leak there somewhere well we've got the standpipe and the dummy plug out of there and look at what we found there we go huge chunk blowing out of our ceiling ring down here now um there's nothing bad there and I don't see any smoking gun here on this dummy plug. However, we've got a whole new set of Ford OEM and we're gonna go back together with those. Gotta get this standpipe and dummy plug replaced and then do another test and we should have fixed our leak. So let's get that changed and I'll bring you guys back. It, I mean, it's pretty easy to replace, so we're just gonna go ahead and do that and I'll bring you back. So what I wanna do is I want to hook up my um, smoke machine and what we're looking, I'm not even gonna turn the smoke on as of yet, but what we're looking for is for this ball down here, it should pop up when we first took it up and then drop right back down as soon as the system fills up so that will tell us if we have a leak or not so let's go ahead I'm not sure if i'm going to be able to do this but with you guys watching but we're gonna i'm gonna try to hook this up all right i plugged it in and immediately picked you guys up and brought you over here this thing has fell down all the ball is right down in here i don't know if you guys can see that or not let's uh if we pull this off see how it jumped up and then as soon as we hook this back up, which I can't do one-handed. Come on. Come on. Anyway, see how that ball, if I can get it to seal off. That ball, there's no leak. There's no leak in the system anymore. Now that we've figured out that that system is sealed off, now we want to make sure that our pump is sealed off. So let me get the IPR block off and we'll screw that in there and test our pump. If that tests good, this thing will run. Okay, so we have the truck back together and uh, as far as we need to to get it running. So we have, yeah, as you can see, everything on the engine's back together. Now, what we want to do is we're going to have to bleed this thing off. So it's gonna crank for a long time. So I wanna make sure that it cranks quickly. We can see that it's doesn't have any pressure, but that's understandable because the whole system is empty. So we're going to have to go through this several different times to get pressure build up. And once we get a pressure build up, I'll bring you guys back. All right. So 
just a heads up we did get this thing going now um, the reason I did it off camera was for one it was cranking for so long um, and I had to put two battery chargers on this thing I'm charging each battery so I didn't yeah I was just once it started building pressure I went ahead and kept cranking because these things will take forever to build pressure uh, especially when the system's as empty as what this one was. So, as we can see, one of the things you want to look for whenever you start trying to crank this is your IPR should go to full, uh, like 90%, 80 to 90%, um, which is meaning that it's closing the thing off and building up pressure. It's deadheading. It still lets a little bit through, and I guess I should also verify and tell you explain it a little bit uh, i know i didn't do that is that by testing through the icp sensor you will have still have some leaks internal that's not going because you can close your ipr valve however um, it's still going to leak through just a little bit so your best way of deadheading a test for the test port to make sure that you have absolutely zero leaks is to either do it the way we did it yesterday or um, you can go in through you can pull your IPR valve out and there's a kit that goes in there you put that in through there and put air pressure to there then you shouldn't have any kind of leaks whatsoever um, but the way we did it here uh, we could we were still having some leaks so yeah but hopefully that makes sense because the the pump on that thing is like a high hydraulic pump and it still has to have a little bit of oil to be able to bypass in order to not tear something up so um we want to whenever we're trying to start these things <coughs> and we're having a problem we want to be able to monitor our icp regulator right now it's open at 14.84 percent it applies voltage to it to close it so once we start cranking this thing will ask for like 1700 psi um, and then you'll start seeing the voltage go up you'll also start to see uh, that the injector control pressure will start building pressure now this thing's going to start a little hard because it still has air in the system uh, so it'll start hard for a couple of times and and some run time uh, we'll take it out and drive it and and we'll have to run it for probably a good uh, 40 miles or so uh, to get all the air out of it but um, it, it will start now so watch the uh, pressures and the icp regulator sorry it's a thousand pounds So, like I said, it's going to take a while to build, to remove all that air from the system in order for it to start better. But we know it's not leaking down because it's maintaining at least 17 psi in the system. Because whenever this system was empty, the uh, ICP sensor was reading zero. It's now reading 17 psi. We should continue to have a certain amount of pressure in the system when it's shut off in order for this thing to be able to start again uh, without any problem. So I did test the pump yesterday. Um, I didn't do that on camera because I had to go to another shop and get the adapter. And so I didn't record that part of it, but um, obviously it works. So. Uh, we'll get this thing finished putting back together. We'll put the inner fender in. We'll recharge the AC. And this thing should be good to go back to the customer. So, well, when I get ready for the test drive, I'll be right back. All right, as you all can see, it's a little late at night. But we're going to go ahead and start this thing. And go on a test drive tonight. We'll see how this thing runs. And... Just verify that we've fixed the problem. So let's, uh, let's go for a drive. I really do like the sound of a 6.0 power stroke. Sounds good. This is good. Let's 
So what we're going to do with this one, I'm going to, on a job like this, I'm going to uh, test drive this thing. Um, we want to verify that it gets the air worked out of it. And so I'll be driving this thing for a little bit and make sure that our problems are solved. Uh, I feel like they are. I think this thing will only get better at starting. Uh, you can actually tell that it started fairly quickly. So I think this thing should be good to go as always. I would like to thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for sharing my videos and um, thanks for getting me up above a thousand subscribers. If you're into YouTube and you know what that means, that means that now I can monetize videos and uh, you know, I, I don't know that I'll ever make big money off of it, but uh, it helps to uh, make up for the time that I spend um, recording videos and editing videos. Uh, it does take a lot of time, so it'll help with that. But thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. Doesn't cost you guys anything. Helps me out a bunch. You know how I always say it. Catch y'all later.